Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum, selamat sejahtera kepada semua hadirin di sini. Uh, saya Rusaslina Idrus daripada Universiti Melaya. Uh, pertama sekali saya nak ucapkan terima kasih, ribuan terima kasih kepada Sister Sin Islam selaku penganjur forum ini. Uh, memang uh, saya ucapkan terima kasih kerana Sister Sin Islam uh, terus untuk uh, meneraju hak isu, hak uh, mengenai isu perkahwinan kanak-kanak uh, dan mengenai hak kanak-kanak uh, kurang daripada setahun lalu juga uh, SIS telah membuat forum uh, ini uh, uh, berkenaan perkahwinan kanak-kanak tapi memang jelas isunya masih perlu dibincangkan masih menjadi isu yang harus kita uh, tangani ya, uh, mengenai perkahwinan kanak-kanak jadi kita uh, di sini hari ini ada empat uh, pakar Uh, yang akan memberi perspektif uh, yang uh, berbeza-beza untuk uh, kita lebih tahu uh, mengenai isu perkahwinan kanak-kanak ini kenapa ya uh, daripada uh, tahun 2010 hingga 2015 ada 6268 kes perkahwinan kanak-kanak yang didaftar ya yang tak berdaftar tu kita tak pasti uh, untuk warga uh, beragama Islam Maksudnya setiap tahun ada lebih kurang seribu uh, kanak-kanak yang berkahwin ya? Dan ini maksudnya di bawah 16 tahun ya? uh, Dan juga kalau, kalau terpuratakan setiap hari mungkin 2-3 orang kanak-kanak berkahwin Jadi ini saya nak men- menekankan yang ianya memang satu isu yang sangat kritikal yang perlu kita uh, tangani dan kita lihat ya? dengan lebih dekat Okey, jadi um, um, saya ingin uh, di sini memperkenalkan panelis-panelis kita. Um, mungkin saya nak juga uh, terangkan sedikit mengenai format hari ini. Uh, kita ada perbentangan uh, atau komen daripada panelis-panelis kita. Lepas tu kita akan bukakan uh, untuk uh, soalan jawab. Uh, tapi pukul 11 kita ada um, break sekejap dan kita kembali untuk uh, meneruskan perbualan ya. Uh, jadi uh, itu untuk memberi sedikit penerangan. Jadi yang uh, yang pertama sekali di sini um, saya nak um, uh, uh, di panelis yang di sebelah saya Dr Nur Rafia. Uh, Dr Nur Rafia uh, berasal dari Indonesia. Uh, beliau adalah seorang uh, pencara di um, di perguruan tinggi ilmu al-Quran di Jakarta uh, seorang graduan PhD dari Ankara University uh, dalam ilmu tafsir ya uh, di sini Dr Nur akan berkongsi uh, uh, pengalaman uh, dari Indonesia dan juga uh, mengenai uh, uh, melihat uh, perkahwinan kanak-kanak ini dari segi uh, ilmu al-Quran ya Um, beliau memang aktif di Indonesia banyak menyuarakan pendapat mengenai isu-isu hak wanita dan um, dia juga adalah ahli lembaga sebuah NGO hak wanita dalam Islam yang agak aktif di Indonesia yang dinamakan Rahima ya. Jadi uh, terima kasih Dr Nur di sini. Uh, ahli panel uh, kita yang um, uh, kedua di sini uh, Encik Nizam Bashir Uh, bin Abdul Karim Bashir uh, Beliau merupakan seorang peguam sivil dan syariah yang uh, berkelulusan dari Bond University Australia dan juga Universiti Islam Antarabangsa di Malaysia uh, Encik Nizam memang aktif uh, sebagai jurucakap uh, mengenai isu-isu hak asasi dan undang-undang syariah uh, Dan beliau juga sangat aktif dalam penulisan uh, banyak menulis dalam akhbar-akhbar tempatan dan telah menghasilkan sebuah buku Berjudul Breaking the Silence: Voices of the Moderation. Oh, one article in the in the book. Um, tapi memang uh, Encik Niza memang seorang pakar yang banyak kita merujuk mengenai isu-isu uh, syariah ya di sini. Jadi kita juga berbesar hati ada Encik Niza di sini. Uh, ahli panel kita yang uh, ketiga, uh, Dr. Uh, yang berhormat Dr. Siti Maria Mahmud. Uh, beliau uh, uh, berkelulusan sebagai doktor perubatan daripada Universiti Cairo uh, Berasal dari Kedah dan pernah menjadi pencarah di fakulti perubatan uh, UKM ya, Daripada 1984 hingga 1997 Dan kini uh, Dr. Siti Maria merupakan ketua angkatan Waita Parti Amanah Dan memang uh, kita juga uh, memang um, selalu melihat uh, 
uh, Dr. Siti Maria di Dewan Rakyat mengajukan uh, isu-isu hak wanita dan hak kanak-kanak ya. Terima kasih Dr. Siti Maria juga ya berada di sini. Uh, dan uh, panelis kita seterusnya adalah Dr. Sharifah Shahira, Syed Sheikh. Uh, beliau merupakan seorang ahli akademik di Universiti Tempatan. Uh, Uh, juga aktif terlibat dalam organisasi antaranya uh, NCWO National Council for Women's Organization dan Just International Movement for a Just World. Uh, beliau juga telah banyak menghasilkan penerbitan uh, di dalam jurnal uh, dalam uh, jurnal-jurnal dan buku dalam bentuk buku mengenai hak wanita. Selain dari itu juga beliau telah menjalankan kajian mengenai isu-isu hak asasi manusia, kanak-kanak dan juga pekerja asing di Malaysia. Selamat datang juga kepada Dr. Syahira Okey, jadi uh, di sini kita akan mula dengan uh, presentasi kita yang pertama ya. Uh, kita menjemput uh, Encik Nizam Bashir Madam Moderator, um, Dr. Rosanna, thank you for inviting me here once again. The last time I was here, it was almost about five years ago, uh, and the topic that I then uh, spoke about on was uh, the, on, on the issue of the Bin Abdullah child, uh, which has since, uh, well, I suppose it's been playing out in, in the courts and in the papers uh, of late. Uh, today, I'm, I'm here to speak on the issue of child marriage in Malaysia. Um, if I were to go by the order of speakers, I was supposed to be the last, but uh, they decided to put me up first. Okay. Yeah. To the laptop, okay. Right, okay. Um, let's firstly look at the legal framework that we have in Malaysia um, on the question of child marriages. Uh, the legislations that we have in Malaysia essentially permits child marriages to take place. Now, we have the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976. Uh, this act applies only to non-Muslims, um, and if you can look at the The, the slide that I've put up there, the minimum age of marriage uh, is supposed to be 18 years, okay? But there is an exception um, for girls. So where girls are concerned, um, even though the girl in question is less than 18 years of age, uh, all the way to 16, the girl can marry, but subject to the permission of the state's uh, chief minister being obtained. Then we have um, the Islamic Family Law Act. Uh, this, this is uh, legislation which applies only to Muslims. Um, you will find that for the other states, the name of the act or the legislation may change, but the provision in essence is about the same. The minimum age of marriage is 18 and above for men. It's above 16 for women, uh, except it can be below 16 if the Sharia judge Uh, has granted his permission in writing, yeah? So to put it very simply, um, child marriages are possible in Malaysia, okay? So the next obvious question is, uh, should we be concerned about child marriages as an issue in Malaysia? Now, if you look at the numbers, uh, since 2010 to 2015, uh, You know, there's been approximately about 1,000 plus or so child marriages taking place a year. Um, but if you add the figures for Muslims and non-Muslims, it works out actually to an average of about 1,506 child marriages a year. 1,506, yeah? To put it in context, that works out to about four child marriages a day. So one every six hours, yeah?
But those are numbers. So what? Is there any real or lasting damage that early marriage causes to girls? Well, the answer to that is yes. There's overwhelming evidence around the world that child marriage has devastating consequences for girls. Okay? Married girls are likely to leave school, likely to stay in poverty, more likely to be victims of d domestic violence. Uh, there's, of course, you know, with, with marriages taking place, there's going to be early pregnancy, there's serious health risks. Um, so those, those are all the issues that arises, um, you know, when there are child marriages. Okay. Earlier, what I was uh, stating as a consequence was from a particular source. This is from the World Economic Forum. Again, you can see there are issues with child marriages. Okay. They leave education early, suffer domestic violence, contract HIV AIDS, complications during pregnancy and childbirth. All right. So this is another source. It's always good when you can find something from Howard. Uh, low education at attainment, poor health outcomes for offspring. Yeah. So to put it very simply, you know, if, if you were to just look up for yourselves, even on Google, you'll find there's all these various reports highlighting the consequences uh, that girls suffer when it is, uh, sit, you know, when, when they undergo child marriage. Uh, and, and, and the only reason why I'm, I'm focusing on girls really is if you look at the laws in question, um, it's, it's, uh, it's where males or boys are concerned marriage is only legal if it's 18 years and above. The reverse is true where girls are concerned. You know, it's below 18. So, having seen or having shown that there are consequences for child marriages, the next obvious question is, what can we do to eradicate child marriage? Okay? The problem, of course, is girls are not empowered, so you should empower girls. So girls need to understand their own rights, uh, because before we talk about what what the law can do for you, you must, you know, I suppose work with the people who are undergoing the, the, the issues in question, which is the girls themselves. They must understand and appreciate that they have certain rights. Okay? Um, there have been uh, two recent uh, legislations which have come out since. Uh, one is the Child Act in 2001, and the other one is the Sexual Offences Against Children Bill or Act to 2017. Um, so, to some extent, I, I think, you know, the, the provisions um, grant additional rights to women or girls. Uh, we haven't quite tested the extent to which those provisions can stand up in the face of um, um, the, the provisions enabling child marriage to take place. But I think it's certainly interesting because you know now you have essentially two two separate legislations uh, facing off one another, and it remains to be seen as to which will prevail. But the point that I'm I'm trying to make here is there are these sections, there are these provisions that that uh, girls can rely upon that they need to be aware about. Um, um, you know, in, you know, supposing if they are being encouraged to take up child marriage, there are all these provisions. Uh, emotional injury, sexual abuse, um, proper supervision, these are all provisions within the Child Act. And, and, and frankly, there's more than just these provisions in the Child Act. Same thing with sexual offences against children. Um, what, what I found most interesting in the Sexual Offences uh, Against Children Bill or Act 2017, a child is defined as anyone below 18. Now, if you look at the earlier two legislations that I talked about, which is um, Law Reform Marriage Divorce Act, Islamic Family Law Act, um, marriage can take place with a child, mm -hmm. and uh, essentially the legal age for marriage is either 16 or even below 16. But here you have provisions which says, doesn't matter, if as long as you are below 18, you can seek recourse to these provisions uh, in the Sexual Offences Against Children Bill or Act. Okay, so these are rights, rights that girls can resort to. Yeah? So if they're being forced or coerced into um, um, a child marriage, these provisions are things that they can avail themselves of to say that they shouldn't be subjected to this. And if there is any uncertainty whether um, 
uh, child marriage is not a form of co coercion, if you accept that a child is a child, they can't consent to marriage. Yeah? And consent is fundamental to a marriage contract. OK? Um, and uh, for girls to understand their rights, we should come up with programs. Um, an event like this is such a program. OK? And essentially allow girls to also have the ability to connect with their peers and support each other as well as ha having access to formal support services. Okay? So what else can we do to eradicate child marriage? There's also the problem of uh, girls being pressured to marry young. It normally comes from families and communities, cultural attitudes. Okay? solution is to work together to address these deep-rooted values and traditions by engaging families, communities. Yeah. So earlier we were focusing on girls, now we are moving beyond girls to families and communities. Okay. All right. Earlier I talked about the fact that uh, there was a legal age for marriage for girls. Uh, under the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act, as long as the girl is 16 and above, she can marry. Um, under the Islamic Family Law Act, as long as the girl is 16, she can marry. If she's below 16, you need a permission from the Sharia court judge. Um, but the point is, then you juxtapose all those legislations with uh, Child Act 2001, the Child Sexual Offences uh, Act or Bill. The, the, the definition or the legal age for a child um, it, 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 it varies or it contradicts with the other two legislation. Yeah. So what needs to be done is you need to approach or lobby members of parliament to amend those legal provisions, define child uh, universally as being below 18 without uh, exception. Yeah. And you need to look at civil legislation, you need to look at criminal legislation, family, le family law legislation, even religious legislation, and just essentially make sure that it's uniform across the board. Yeah. So if you look at the penal code, for example, um, there's a provision, section 375G. If there's sexual intercourse between a man and a girl who is under the age of 16, it's a crime. Okay? But then you have provisions enabling child marriage to take place. So, you know, and, and what you have found over, over, over the years essentially is, um, you know, you have uh, individuals essentially committing the crime but then looking for a way out by marrying the girls in question. Okay? So that's not quite appropriate. Um, and you have also other legislations essentially which set the, the legal age uh, differently. So a child can't smoke, can't drink, can't vote, but can marry. So that's a bit odd. So the things that we need to do perhaps is also look at criminalizing child marriage. Okay? It's not just about um, uh, changing the legal age, I think we need to take one step more and say that, you know, child marriages is a crime. What else can be done? Vis-a-vis <clears throat> uh, -vis the problem of lack of political will, lack of means of advocacy, one way is to challenge the provisions of those two acts by way of a court action. Okay. Um, how this has been done over the years, I think maybe in the last maybe 10 years in particular, um, to, to argue and say that the provisions are unconstitutional as it conflicts with fundamental liberties. Um, if you look at the Constitution, part two of the Federal Constitution guarantees certain rights to citizens or persons. There's Article 5, which is right to life. Uh, included or subsumed within the right to, to life is right to health, including re reproductive health, right to dignity, right to privacy. Okay. The only problem with Article 5 is it's, it's essentially subject to an exception that you, know, you can encroach upon the right to health, you can encroach upon the right to dignity if you do it in accordance with law. So it's a bit, it's a bit strange how, how the jurisprudence is on that at the moment. But I, th I still think um, it's still important to talk about Article 5. There is um, Article 8, right to equality. All persons are equal before the law. Any deprivation of family support, forcing a child into early marriage, based only on the reason that she is a girl, is direct discrimination against the girl child. Yeah? If you look at those two legislations just now, um, Law Reform Marriage Divorce Act, 
Islamic Family Law Act, a male, essentially, or a boy, is not permitted to marry if he's below 18, but a girl can. Okay, so that's direct discrimination, yeah? Uh, part of the problem with Article uh, 8 is uh, it doesn't invalidate provisions reg regulating personal law. So there's, there may be some issues vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Islamic family law provisions. Uh, but there's also right to association. Article 10, freedom to marry and remain in marriage is an association held as falling, falling within the scope of this right. Uh, Quite interestingly is, you know, there's, there's numerous orders made by the Sharia courts in Malaysia, this notion of nushus, yeah? So in other words, if um, a wife leaves the matrimonial home, the husband can take, uh, uh, or can file an action essentially seeking an order from court saying that the wife must come, come back to the family home, return to the association of the husband. Um, some cases in some other countries have talked about the fact that such an order is not quite valid, yeah? Not quite tested here, though. Okay. There's Article 11, arguably provisions within the Islamic Family Law Act um, uh, is within the scope of Article 11. Okay. But the point to note is, uh, even though um, you know, authorities may, may opt to raise Article 11 and say that that's a right of the religious communities to regulate their, their community. Um, Article 11 rights does not authorize any act contrary to any general law relating to public order, public health, or morality. Yeah? And if you look at Section 31 of the Child Act, ill treatment, neglect, abandonment, or exposure of children. These are things, these are rights that girls have. Okay. Right to education, when a child, when a girl is uh, subjected to child marriage, more often than not what happens is they are, um, I suppose, compelled to, to leave school uh, to deal with the, with the, with the you know, if, if she's, I suppose, having a child, to raise the child, etc. So under Article 12, she has the right to education, okay? Um, you can also say that those provisions in the Law Reform Marriage Divorce Act and the Islamic Family Law Act conflicts with international treaties ratified by Malaysia. Um, there's the UDHR, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, men and women of full age have the right to marry and found a family, but marriage must be entered with, full and, with free and full consent. Okay. Child Rights Convention, there's all these rights under the CRC. The CRC is actually the basis by which the Child Act 2001 was drawn up. There's all these rights, yeah? Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, Article 16, Sub 1. Uh, same right to enter into marriage, same right to choose a spouse, and marriage only with the free and full consent. And this, this is, I think, quite vital, the fact that there must be full consent to a marriage, and a child cannot consent to a marriage. Yeah? And 16.2 in particular, the betrothal and the marriage of a child shall have no legal effect. Malaysia is a party to CEDAW as well. Yeah? There were initial reservations to Article 16 sub 1 uh, and 16 sub 2. Both were withdrawn on, on various dates. Now, asserting those rights are not quite far-fetched. It, it has been upheld in Tanzania, and if we have to look as far as Tanzania to start looking for cases upholding children's uh, rights, I think it's problematic in the sense that we are not doing this first and foremost here. Yeah? So, you know, essentially those are the, the legal provisions that we can avail oursel ourselves and, and argue that those provisions under the Law Reform Marriage Divorce Act and the Islamic Family Law Act uh, can be invalidated. But beyond, beyond uh, legal challenges, uh, the reality is sometimes child marriages also take place outside of the law. So we need to work with religious and traditional leaders to raise awareness of the law, harmful impact of child marriage, and, that they, you know, and the alternatives that there are for girls. So they need to ask for proof of age before wedding and report child marriage cases to the relevant authorities. 
child marriages happens in rural areas. If you look at the pamphlet that's been given to you, uh, the highest incidence of child marriage takes place in Kelantan and I think uh, Sabah. Okay, so the tendency is for these marriages to take place in rural areas. So you need to create and strengthen child protection systems, support legal aid systems and services. The other issue is there is uh, differing interpretations um, and traditions vis-a-vis uh, -vis child marriage. Um, and I think we need to talk about those, uh, int uh, those traditions or those interpretations which affirms the rights of children, okay? Um, so that at the end of the day that, you know, the approach isn't, isn't to be promoting child marriage, yeah? So just to sum it up before another bell rings, um, we've talked about the legislations which permit child marriages in Malaysia. We've talked about the various problems uh, which, which uh, enable child marriages to take place. I've pointed out, I think, hopefully, uh, some of the steps which allows us to eradicate child marriages. So I'll just end by quoting this from this particular case. Um, from the case of Sushila Gothala, the social evil of child marriage can only be eradicated if people revolt against the custom. Hopefully, whatever that I've said today lays the seed of that revolt, and at the very least, the seed of that revulsion against child marriage. Uh, I'll just end with, with uh, one particular incident that happened recently. I don't know whether you, you remember one or two days ago, there was the sentencing, you know, that was carried out for the father who, you know, committed incest against his daughter, and it's such a shocking uh, um, incident in terms of the number of, you know, offences that this girl has been subjected to. If you do not feel the same sense of revulsion, just read <clears throat> the newspaper article relating to that incident. And if you don't come away changed. You know, I, 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 you know, I think, I think, it's one of the best ways. I think, if you're talking about advocacy, just look at that. Okay, thank you. Terima kasih, Encik Nizam Bashir. Ya. Um, tak maaf ya tadi tak tak bagi tahu yang pertama tadi. <laughs> Tapi uh, saya rasa uh, jelas kenapa kita menjemput uh, Encik Nizam sebagai um, pembentang pertama kerana beliau telah dapat memberi satu gambaran menyeluruh ya, mengenai isu uh, perkahwinan kanak-kanak dari impaknya dan juga dari segi undang-undang. Um, ya. uh, jadi saya rasa um, ia memberi kita semua satu um, uh, apa ni? Um, like a foundation ya, untuk uh, uh, kita membina lagi dalam uh, perbincangan kita hari ini.